I don't have definitions, but I can give you heuristics, right? Uh, for me, Web1 is static content and the users of the Web1 are largely consumers, uh, is people coming on informational static pages, uh, reading text. Web2 for me is all about user participation. Not much changes in the technical architecture of the web itself, but now you have user-generated content, uh, you have user interaction. Just think of Facebook, right? Uh, people are messaging each other. They're also posting things, uh, which I'm calling user-generated content. The important part about that is all of it is happening in siloed corporate-owned databases, uh, which means your conversation on Facebook is happening inside Facebook's database. Uh, that's where things are getting updated. Web3 is again focused on user related things. So user interaction, user generated content, uh, user participation. But the important part is that none of it is happening in those siloed corporate owned databases. All of it is happening in a public shared database. And if you add, add an innovation on top of that, that innovation is the cryptography tech at the foundation of it all. What that lets users do is mark a piece of data as truly their own. Uh, so that's what Web3 is to me, a shared global database where users can actually mark a piece of data as their own. So in terms of redefining the internet, Web3, I think, changes the social dynamic of the web. Before you had all of this user participation happening on siloed corporate-owned databases uh, where users are contributing to the machine. Uh, and Web3 inverts that, where user participation is happening on a shared database accessible by all. What that does is previously, you had people architecting platforms that users can best serve. With Web3, you now have people architecting platforms that can best serve the user. Uh, so that's the switch uh, in the dy social dynamic uh, that Web3 brings. ThirdWeb's mission is to make it easy to build Web3 apps. When you're building your product, a game, an application, whatever it may be, uh, everything between your product and the blockchain is kind of like implementation details. Uh, just to build a good product, you do not need to become a Web3 engineering shop or a crypto company yourself. Uh, so all those things between your product and the blockchain itself is what ThirdWeb wants to handle for you. In terms of the third web product itself, uh, we offer pre-built secure smart contracts, SDKs in various client or server languages to interact with your smart contracts, and a dashboard. So if you don't want to write any code at all, you can pretty much do everything on our dashboard itself. We recently hit a milestone. Uh, there were 100,000 smart contracts deployed on third web. Smart contracts were a piece of software that was completely inaccessible or something too niche even when I started uh, smart contract development. Uh, but now you have independent artists to Fortune 500 companies to senior engineering teams, all kinds of people deploying smart contracts via third web. So I see us as breaking down the barriers to break into Web3. In terms of Web3 projects that excite me, I always like to go back to the basics. Uh, and that means uh, going back to finance uh, and going back to availability of data on this shared database. In terms of finance, I will again go back to the basics. It is Uniswap, uh, the first uh, DEX that was introduced. Uh, maybe not the first officially, but first in the public eye, at least. Uh, studying the basic first or original protocols like these uh, is massively helpful uh, to get a greater understanding of how Web3 works in general. Then I'm excited about the graph protocol. As an application developer, uh, trying to pull data from the shared database that I'm calling the blockchain, uh, it's actually hard and slow, and there are limitations to how much data you can read from the blockchain if you're starting out uh, small if you don't have an enterprise level engineering team. The graph uh, is making this data on the shared database easily available. 
uh, just like third web is letting you deploy smart contracts through a website uh, without having to program the graph will give you the data you want from the shared database through a website if you're not technical or through good developer tools if you are a technical person so the graph protocol and uniswap yeah this is a question that is very exciting to me right uh, in my eyes you don't need to know how to code to contribute to the evolution of the internet uh, you don't need to have a specific skill set and there are three basic things you can do. You can write, you can speak, or you can program. Uh, if you can do any of those three, and it is about the decentralized web, you are contributing to the evolution of the decentralized web. Uh, and all of those three things are equally as important. Uh, if you write about the decentralized web, you can write proposals for how the web should be structured itself, or you can write something public that other people are gonna read and get educated. If you're speaking about it, the same thing applies. Uh, your ideas will have an impact to, how, to the future of how the shared database is organized. And programming is somewhat self-explanatory there. Uh, if you can actually code and contribute to the pieces of code that are making up this web 3.0 we're talking about, then great, go ahead and do it. I think the only real uh, threat to, to Web3 or the scenario in which Web3 fails is in the face of violence. Uh, and, and I'm gonna talk about the two, two kinds of violences there. Uh, physical violence, meaning if a government tomorrow decides to just physically imprison everyone engaging with the web, uh, if some kind of dystopia occurs uh, where uh, a body capable of physical violence engages in violence like that, then sure, Web3 will fail. Uh, the other kind of violence is regulatory violence. When you have uh, bodies capable of making regulations, but somewhat not uh, aligned with the vision of the people building Web3 itself, maybe they think the purpose of introducing this Web3 thing is nefarious. Uh, then they can maybe from the wrong place apply regulations to the industry that are just going to harm the innovation that's happening. Uh, so mainly physical violence and regulatory violence, that's how Web3 fails. We need to avoid that. <laughs> Web3 matters because we all want a web that is serving the people that use it and not the other way around. You can think of the, the Matrix, the movie The Matrix. Uh, you don't want to be the human battery that is powering these advanced machines. Uh, you want all these advanced machines, these advanced technologies that we've developed to be uh, powering you, like powering the people. Uh, that's the dynamic we want, not the other way around. When you have all of the web's data living in a shared global database where each user can now mark a piece of data as truly their own, that's when a user can truly express consent, a user can express preference, and they can exercise their freedoms better than they can in Web2, and especially their financial freedoms. Uh, yeah, that's why Web3 matters. All of what I said, Web3 matters for those reasons.